I'm gonna take you on a tour of Farmgate Road. I remember when that church was being built. When that church, before, when it was just a field. Me and Dad walking down this way and Dad said they're building a church. I was probably four years old. Back then I hated church because you had to be quiet. I, I wanted to go to the nursery. And I've been in that field many a times before. There, that house right there is where when I was four and five, I had a friend named Vanessa Brown who would always come over to my house. Scott Mitchell lived at that house back in 1989. He was one of uh, my brother's nin Nintendo friends. He and the gang would come over to my house to play Nintendo because we had a, a Nintendo and they didn't. Chucky and Amanda Allison, the Cutlips, lived here. I remember they, they experienced a terrible tragedy when their son and his girlfriend were riding and his, got in an accident and their son died. Chucky and Amanda Allison lived there. Chucky was the one who punched me and Casey in the arm on the bus that time and made Casey cry. I remember talking with the black woman there in 1990 about the Bible and the end times. And she was talking about in the end, people, will, people will, with the heads cut off becoming the life in the streets. That house right there, ironically, the Wilson house, or that Wilson gang on Adkins Street. I've been in there. I have a vague memory of being in there and asking mom if it was time to go. Because my second cousin, Anthony Claiborne, and his parents used to live here. I was probably two years old. A drug dealer lived at that house at one time. Michelle Flowers lived there. A friend of my cousin Casey's lived there. In fact, he went with him and his family to Florida and came back tan, and he's been tan ever since. And a chick magnet. Doris, Tony, Stevie, Katie, and Chris Light lived there. Russ and Chris Dunn lived there. Their parents still live there. Uh oh. There, lived, living there was a fat man who baked the bread. He used to have a truck with a boy licking his lips saying, Bake while you sleep. The Smalls lived there. I met, uh, there's Farmgate Road. Man, I wish I lived there right now, right this fucking instant. Dusty Sparrow lived there. This we used to call Laverne Street because Laverne and Chris Smith and the Smiths lived at that house right there. And we used to go over, the, come over here and play with them when I was six years old, seven. I remember that house, nobody lived there. When I was eight years old, I was always going to the backyard and climb those chop pine trees. Herman lived there. He was a friend. Him and Paul were best friends for years. A guy named Kevin lived there. He was a bully at one time. Or a guy I didn't like because I thought he was a bully. Ah, uh, I remember this time when I was three years old. Dad coming down here. There was a basketball going. The neighborhood kids would play basketball. That time, uh, the first time I came here, when they started shouting, going, going way to go, I was crying because it scared me. And there's a boy who tried to be my friend, and I wouldn't pay him any rats as mine. And my mom got mad about that. Uh, many times when I was four and five, my mom uh, would love to go play bingo. So, dad was working, so the Wiggins lived here. Bryn, Miss Wiggins, and they had two children who would babysit, either Brenda Wiggins or sometimes Jimmy Wiggins. Brenda Wiggins used to make me cry because I'd be, she'd make me go to bed out here out there watching Charlie's Angels and that music to Charlie's Angels would make me cry. Kim lived there. And later in 1990, a uh, hoodlum friend, Deborah lived there. Marty and Dee Dee King lived there. I remember the kids from there used to come running behind the houses, screaming to play with me at my house in the ditch. 
good memory. Deborah, Cindy, Shannon, sometimes Junior. I remember having the Marty's birthday party in that house. I was the only guy there. It was a butterfly cake. That piece of shit wasn't here at the time. There was a field which we used to plan. Adam and his sister lived there. A black guy, friend of my dad, lived there. Right there, Debbie lived in the su summer of the third grade. When third, uh, oh, in the third grade, she used to babysit us. I remember this road when it was being ex built. Seeing this road from Farmgate Road, seeing the bulldozers plowing and making out this road. Man, her arms are so well. long. She's got to hold the elbows held way out the story. to the sides. I wish my arms were long like that. Okay, you're in. You're on it now. Oh, right there, at that house right there was a friend, a bully named Tommy. He was my cousin's friend, but later we became friends, huh? Huh? I, I, can, I can't, I can try to play basketball. Sure. And John and Joy used to live there. I remember we had a tussle arguing about the woods until one time I threw a rock and busted Joy's head. Wow. This is a long time. We were, we were fighting. Rita Harper used to live there. We had a big trouble with her. Uh, they used to play. They used to play uh, softball in that field over there because that house uh, beyond the those houses wasn't there. Yeah, and right there, uh, uh, earlier, Doris and Katie, Light, Doris and Tony and Katie and Stevie Light lived here. In fact, they'd walk with my mom and Dee Dee King. Uh, Tangle Drive, and we would, ma Mom, I know, I have to ride this bike, hold on, let me get this off, back when I was four and five, when my mom used to walk, me and Jamie, around this block, Doris, Mom met Doris right here, she met Dee Dee King right here, and they used to walk with us, and back then there was, most of these houses were being built and unoccupied. You got some keys? Nah. You got a mom? Uh huh. Where your mom is? Uh, she's at home. You got a baby? No. I don't look that old, do I? <laughs> huh? I don't look that old, do I? Huh? Yeah. Okay, right there? No. Okay. No. Okay. She's gonna show me her house. I'm, I'm talking to the video. Yeah, they know me out on this, in this neighborhood as a rapper. Everybody? Not everybody, but a lot of them. Okay. Oh, that house with the fence? I remember when we used to walk, Mom, me, Jamie, Dee Dee King, and Doris, and there was three dogs in that fence. And they, they, they told us one of them was blind. Huh? That's your house? Yeah. I'm getting it. You gotta throw out, throwing out some. Go down there? Huh? You can go down there? Yeah. On the big road too? Yep. What you gonna to? Uh, I don't know. There's the rail fence entrance. Hey, you walk through this. I'll, I'll be down there in a second. You. Rail fence interest in my trails. And we're coming up to the Manchester interest to my trails. Hey! You remember me? Oh, I thought. You, uh, you were the guy who lived there, I, the guy who used to live here? You know, I'd gone back. Okay, yeah, I'm just... 
Uh, not yet. That's too too many ticks. Yeah. Right. Yep. I got a video. Take my woods. Right there. You yeah, see, he lets me park my bike, and when I had a car, he'd let me park my car. Right there, you take that little pathway, and you come out a third of the ways through my trails. Again, this is the rail fence entrance to my trails. Let me show you something. Man, these brakes are not, this box ain't worth a fuck. You go through here, you take this path. Fuck. And by and down through the uh, through there, past there, is where my trail begins. Is where I begin my the first place I begin cutting after November tenth, nineteen ninety four, after my grandma George passed away. When I was twelve I used to, this these woods used to be, be my hot I I used to uh, that right there was just a field of weeds and a water hole which I called the mini sub pond. I used to always wonder where it was lay beyond the field on the other side of the mini sub pond. And in 1994, I was finally decide, decided I was going to find out. Oh, in 1989, in uh, February, it had grown into a war of briars uh, beyond the field on the opposite side of the water hole. And me and Casey blazed some trails through those briars. They were so cold and brittle after the ice storm. But by 1994, everything had grown up beyond the mini sub pond. And it was now a wall of pine trees. But as I cut through, begun cutting down the trail through those pine trees, I felt a whole new world opening up to me. Ah, I remember many a time walking around the block. Sometimes these houses right here were empty, being built. You could actually go inside of them and there would be horse flies inside of them and we would sometimes walk inside and look around in these houses. Me, my mom, Dee Dee King, Marty, she used to walk with us too. She began trying to ride a bike and kept falling and getting scrapes and had to get some red medicine applied to the scrapes at that house there used to live my friend Jason Berg he would let it be now coming up coming to Bianca Brewer's house he's the guy who provided me this music right here for my song War in the City after the, what you call it, talent showcase on June 10th, 2000. He's the one who helped me as I was trying to break into the music business. That's his house, right there. The younger Brewer, formerly the owner of Styles Entertainment until the, he closed it down. It's kind of hard to sell the record label here in the Ash Backwards, North Carolina. The Ash Backwards area of the United States of America. Oh, there was a, another house we missed. Christian Allen Joe used to live there. Back there. That house there. In the spring of my second great year. Or maybe it was the summer. Anyways, I was eight years old. There lived some youths here, the white youths here. I was riding my bike there one time. Two of them came out and stopped me. One of them's name was Kevin. And they're like, we're a gang. I'm like, what's a gang? We hurt people and stuff. Don't come this way again. He had me scared. So I walked back home, back there. I went, walked through the bride and I didn't care about getting stuck. I just didn't want to get hurt. Well, one afternoon, my dad and Uncle Mark were sitting in the car, parked on the curb of where I lived at, Farm, at Farmgate Road. And I tell, told Daddy and him and Uncle Mark said, you just go ahead and go down there. I'm thinking about it, but you don't understand, they're going to hurt us. He's like, no they won't. And what happened is, 
these same guys were riding, they're driving their truck. They passed my house when my dad and Uncle Mark were there. And Uncle Mark shot them the finger. They came back to talk some smack. Uncle Mark went, ran to the other side of the truck to the guy who was talking shit and kicked the door as he was getting out. And I don't know, about broke his fucking leg. Had him screaming. While Dad pushed the other one in and closed the door and gave him a concussion. They never bothered us no more. The police came and asked, was there any trouble here? And Uncle Mark was like, no. And the police said, I didn't think so. So evidently, the police knew those youths were up to no good either. And that's the tour of 14 Tim Farm Gate Road and all what I would, wouldn't do to live it at 14 Tim Farm Gate Road once again. But first I have to get some fucking money, win the lottery, make it as a rec uh, rapper or sell drugs. Then I got to pay the new residents that are living there enough money to make them want to move because they apparently are very happy there. And then I got to buy the fucking house. God damn. I got my work cut out for me. I need people, I need fucking money. Now you can either work either work with me. God damn it. Or I'll find a way to get her if I had to beg for every cent. Panhandling. I I don't give a fuck. Fuck being proud and a self-image. Fuck them. Image is nothing. The desire to live at 1410 Farm Gate Road is everything. So fuck you and fuck this and fuck everything. Can I, can I get, you know, if I only had long arms and was a good looking guy and still looking in my 20s, I could forget the rest of this shit. That right there used to be Mr. Rouse's store. We came to this store many a times. Many, 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 many times. Sometimes his wife would work, work there. His mother would occasionally work there and they seemed to really like me. Of course, I was a little fucking kid then. But, that concludes your tour of Farmgate Road. Man, hasn't changed much. The only goddamn crock of shit is that it was annexed by the city of Kinston in not late 87. And after that, there's no more grasshoppers, no more crickets at night. No more ants except those goddamn fire ants. I remember when that building used to not be there. It was a field. I remember picking strawberries in that strawberry field in grade school with my dad. All those uh, all those strawberries were cheap. Mom made the most delicious strawberry pie. But before that, it was a cornfield and then a wheat field. And I remember seeing the combines. Being fascinated, daydreaming about me being the farmer and me running the combines and me planting the food. And after I, pl I had planted and harvested, harvested everything, we having a nice cookout on the side of our house. <laughs> God fucking damn this park is fucking pissing me off. Coming up. There used to be a house. You see that mailbox? There used to be a house right there. Some twin black girls lived. They had their own dumpster in the backyard. No shit. But in the eighth grade, I think, the house burned down. My cousin Paul would claim that he threw a gas bomb and burnt the house down, but I think he was lying. All this shit there used to be farmland, farmer's field. Until 1988. And they tore up the farmland and started building this fucking shit right here.